virtual trek con for folks and anybody else who happened along we're here live uh there we go chat hopefully we'll have some chat folks pop it in a second and um terrace i didn't uh, mention that there's a chat do you see the chat window over on the right side on the right hand side no you yeah, did yeah. Mention it. Yep. Huh? You mentioned it. yes so hopefully we'll have some folks I'm in fully informed but here we are and uh Welcome, everybody. If you're on the fifth day of Virtual Trek Con, it's been amazing. And there's people popping in. Yay. I hey, I think we're going to have, I'm almost sure we'll probably have some of our friends that we already know, Tara. Oh, that'd be nice. But everybody, it's Dr. Yeah, Trek Larry Dimichek. Hello once again, my fourth time, and my good buddy and colleague, Tara Cassidy from Geek Nation Tours. Oh, How is everyone off. today? <laughs> show off the shirt. Oh. <clears throat> Geek Nation Tours. Is it backwards, though? Or no, it... no, it's good. It's oh, okay. good. Good, good, good. Yeah. yeah, see, right there. This is the 50th anniversary uh, shirt when we did our 50th mm -hmm. anniversary tour, which was yep. tremendous. So, yeah. so our topic, oh, and so, uh, oh, by the way, Terrace, I think your Wi-Fi is settling down. It's getting better and better. Oh, I look more beautiful now. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's not get carried away. It's, it's the filter. I put a, I put a beauty filter yeah. on. Technology can only do so much, though. Yeah, that's true. Um, no, I, we were a little worried about his Canadian Wi-Fi because Terrace is coming to us all the way from the middle of Alberta. Yeah, man, it actually is snowing very hard right now. Maybe that has something oh, to do with it. Maybe also. that was it. Well, thanks to this guy, part of the, well, part of the background that a lot of you know, I'm a big background person, canon person. And uh, I'm going to keep an eye on the chat, Terrace. When I'm talking, you can look in the chat and see if you want to sure. yell somebody. And if you see some, I can put people on the screen. So um, if you see somebody, look, give me a time code and I'll. Uh, so here we go. See, I'd like to say thank you, Virtual Trek Con, for having us on. Yay. Uh, this is the first time I think we've done this. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, right. As a panel, as a virtual thing. So cool on that. But. Um, um, I was always a fun, uh, a fan of everything background, which included figuring out where they shot things. And in the old days, that was like, oh, Desilu and then the next generation. And, and obviously some things, well, we'll talk about this, but some things are really obvious. A lot of folks know. And if you're in SoCal, you, you know it because it's local. But even folks around the country over the years, 20, 30 years of Star Trek got to do that. But this guy, tell us what happened to you in 2008, Terrace, before we talk about locations per se. Like you and I went in. Well, even that before that, you you were a travel agent. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was a travel agent, and uh, of course, the uh, there was a huge collapse of the economy, a recession, and uh, no one was traveling, and I didn't know what to do. And uh, so I thought about like Mexican booze cruises, that kind of thing, and I'm like, that's not really me, you know. And and uh, I decided that I would do all things geek from battlefields to trek to miniature war games and board games so anywhere in the world that was interesting to a geek i would do so i uh, anything from a samurai battlefield in japan to uh going to sites with larry <laughs> well you had a, a few of those and conventions too you go to gen con and adepticon yeah gen con, yeah, gen con <laughs> adepticon uh several other conventions san diego mm -hmm. con con was actually our first tour so we oh, went okay. there. Yeah, yeah, it was great. It was, I mean, it's tremendous. It was, uh, it was, uh, it was eye opening because it's so huge. But uh, yeah, that was our first co convention, and then uh, after that, we went to the UK for a miniature wargaming one to Nottingham. Mm -hmm. All the yeah, you can probably see in my background all the toy soldiers up on my uh, on the bookshelf and tables. Big gamer, I'm, I'm, big tabletop gamer, guys. Uh, <clears throat> big geek. Yes, when he says time. Geek Nation tours, he means it. But I met you. Yes. <clears throat> this guy wanders up to me in 2011 at STLV Trek Vegas in 2011 and says, do you think a Star Trek tour would make sense or it could be doable? And I was like, because I've wanted to do a guidebook for ages and we keep talking about it to Star Trek location sites. And I have, I have the reference from the call sheets, much less the common knowledge, but like hyper details for people that want that. Right. But so, yes, so between the first year we did uh, this, this is the 2014, but here's the, here's my, uh, got to get my sides right. Yay. Uh, this is the 2014 tour. That's right. That's awesome. Right, right, right. Um, oh, well, the best thing is the back. Good. Can I even swivel around? Are we good? There. <laughs> the Gorn shirt. 
The Gorn yeah, Shrine. That's yes. awesome. Because one of the big things, of course, is Vasquez Rocks. But yeah. uh, I, but I, something, and it just made such sense to me. And this was even before Terrace. I knew that experiences were what people were after now, not just yeah. stuff to put on their yeah. shelf, right? Right. Which is what you're finding when you talk to people. Yeah, uh, it's all about <laughs> it's all experiential um, experiences. Um, it's all about getting the people there, doing, um, being able to touch it. You know, I mean, I think that that's one, even in battlefields, when you're, when I'm doing some historical stuff, uh, I see people touching things all the time to make sure that they're actually there. And I think that that connection to a real thing is important. And, uh, then when I have guides like Larry, uh, they talk about, you know, Star Trek and how, it, how not only where it was filmed, cause we're there where it was filmed but also kind of uh, what angles they used, why they used it, why, you know, with Bobby in the Gorn suit, like we just mentioned, it was 103 degrees Fahrenheit and how awful it was to be there and it was a terrible fight scene and all of it. But all those experiences, I think that's what people really are are looking for in travel right now. Yeah, and I, and I want to just do a shout out here to the chat because I see a lot of folks I know, but then I know there's folks here that you <laughs> know, and I'm going back to the beginning, like there's Robert, yeah, there's Robert. One of our friends coming up. Marie's and, there uh, too. It's just every it's just good to see everybody. I'm gonna dip in and out of this when I can, but it's just the two of us. So um Great. anyway, and he's yes, and he says, Hey, I have the 50th anniversary polo shirt, and we'll bring it to STLV again this year. So now you know. This was a th I wore this ubiquitously to shirt to cons for so long that when I was at uh, in England at DST you're, you're from New York. there was a three um there was a 3D model person for a while with a license and they gave all the guests a free scan and a model. So my, it's not my action figure, but my guy is actually wearing the, oh, I've never seen that before. Never, it's scary. It's no scary. Way. It's just, a, it was just like it, a simple scan. And from, it wasn't, someone painted that though. No, this is the, well, they, I guess they did, but this is the way it came. They had these for us the next day. So if they did, it was fast. Anyway, wow. they've since gone out of business, but, I got mine. That's, that's spectacular. Um, anyway, I would like mine. <clears throat> and then I should have had the year some the year uh, uh, Richard Burnett here in in uh, L.A. cosplayed me at Vegas. He borrowed this. <laughs> we got you. I remember that. <laughs> that was anyway, well, I want to. Uh, hey, everybody, I'm going to try to jump in here, but it's just the mm -hmm. two of us. So, um, yell. We'll try to. Maybe we can go back and find some questions if everybody. It's it's so, again so great to see everybody. Glad you're enjoying virtual TrekCon. But I wanted to bring in some images here because when we talk about locations, um, you know, you people, and I will say this, I love having people take our big tour. I love having people take my day, I'm so backwards, my day tour, Trekland Treks, everybody. Um, but, you know, you can do, you can do, you can watch the shows and realize what's going on. Like here, for instance, boom. Um you know, everybody, I think everybody by now recognizes, at least during the TNG Voyager DS9 days, <clears throat> Starfleet Academy, Starfleet Headquarters. And the Golden Gate is back here, so it's official. <laughs> and they, they it, I think people paying attention to the real life locations that it's supposed to be, because they always take San Francisco and then update it from the motion picture onward. And right. they really, really went and found a location that they used over and over again <clears throat> for for uh, Starfleet Academy and or Starfleet Headquarters in those days. And if you are around, if you know us, but if you're around LA, if people know that this is a matte painting up here, but boom, there's the real building. Right. And you know what that is, Terrace. Yes, the Tillman uh, rec Reclamation uh, Facility yeah. and Japanese Gardens. Yes, the Japanese Gardens beautiful. are over here. And people go, Wait, you mean a sewer plant? And yes, the whole yeah. thing was supposed to show that a sewer plant could not only not smell bad, but be beautiful. Right. <clears throat> and you know what's, and, what's good about this particular place is that you could bring uh, relatives that are like not Star Trek fans too, and they could look at a beautiful place. Because these gardens are actually quite expansive around the this front of the uh, yeah. facility. And uh, it's really interesting because when we were there, we had, remember we had... Uh, so people were cosplaying and everything, and somebody walk, uh, walk, walked up to us and said, is there a Star Trek connection to this whole thing? And I tur literally turned them around and faced this particular view and say, yeah, that's Star Trek HQ or Academy. And he's like, 
oh my god it is and so he was there for like an hour and he hadn't even realized so you mean uh, you mean uh people like oh this? yes exactly. that's what this. people like that yeah yeah exactly. there. No, look at that crew <laughs> There you uh, go, Robert. Crew, there you yeah, Fred Center. 2014, I think. But anyway, but this is the kind of thing you can do on your own or go mm -hmm. when you go. Um, it's currently it's free. They're not even charging admission, but it's limited. So you have to yeah. and it's not open on the weekends. So uh, but yeah, so the you see the little bonsai trees, or not the bonsais, but the small miniature trees. So the whole mm -hmm. other end over here is where the Edo ran through half naked in in yes. uh, justice when Wesley got in trouble for playing baseball on the lawn. And it wasn't marked. I think any judge would have thrown that out. Um. Well, the good thing is if you're on tour, uh, Larry will run half naked through the, the gardens with us. So this is yes. the new, I just, I'm just laying it on him. Right or collect now. an extra fee not to. That's okay. right. <laughs> so, you know, and so you've got Boothby in the Boothby tree. What's fun about this is people think the iconic side of the building there where they added the matte paintings and all that, but you can go and find, as we have done, and have fun with the Boothby Bridge. And you can sit down and have your own little heart-to-heart -heart scene. That's right. Uh, thank you here to Stevie, who filled in as his Picard cosplay. We yeah. we jumped in the moment and, and did this one year, one year. That was um, yeah. So, I mean, I, but again, like, this is, uh, this is a thing that, um, you know, you can go find uh, Tillman and go on your own. Yep. What's cool is absolutely uh, having like more, and you know what? And there's so much online you can you can research bits and pieces online too. Yep. Um, like 10, 15 years ago, we were very unique, and it's not so much now. But even though I, I still feel like we can, you can find your own. But there's a lot of fun uh, stuff to bring. Yeah. The other thing is that now that there's so many damn iterations of Star Trek, you might go to the other Starfleet Academy. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> Which, if anybody has ever been to WonderCon down in uh, in um, Anaheim, right there, yeah, it's uh, there. The, yeah the the Picard era, <clears throat> um, Starfleet Starfleet headquarters that they showed with Admiral Sheer F and Hubris Clancy, uh, her office was technically supposed to be it was a set, but the exterior. And the great thing about location shooting guys, especially in the cellular phone era, it didn't happen in the '60s and the '80s, but now. People are, they're doing a big public space like this. People are walking by and anytime you see people running around in yellow, blue and red and black outfits, more and more of the population just knows that looks like Star Trek. So you had people who weren't fans even who happened to just be there because right. there are two big hotels in front of this convention. People who were there going, I think they're shooting Star Trek over there. Yeah. And you get things like this posted on people's, you know, Instagrams and, and Twitter, and then it becomes yeah. viral. And fandom, who knows there's something new coming most of the time, goes, look, it's some shots from, which is exactly what happened here back in the day. Yeah. <clears throat> and what's uh, what's amazing is that, like you were saying, is that the internet is such a huge resource. I mean, Robert's got uh, one of his uh, site there, too. Yes. I want to put that link on, on, your, on, your, on, on the chat there. Uh, but um, we'll get down to it. Uh, yeah. There's so <laughs> much information out there that you can find cool, cool places to go. And, uh, and, and uh, as a matter of fact, you could even go to my site, look at our tour and copy it yourself. Cause there's tons of, uh, some of those are, are, it'll be hard to find. Larry and I've always added one that's kind of more mysterious or, or <laughs> so but you could literally go and uh copy it uh um you might not get the the stuff that we add because we add a whole bunch of stuff that we could talk about later yeah. but there is uh uh there's literally so much to see in la alone and then who knows what city you're in you might find some cool stuff there too so uh yeah well yes i was gonna say i'm getting a second to go back to the chat so hello david i think we've met before but hi if we haven't uh, he says what I was about to mention earlier when you were talking about actually being there to touch. It's exactly like yeah. the data Picard and Troy. Am I interrupting something? Scene in First Contact yeah. with the Phoenix. It's hundred percent that. Yeah. 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 And we uh, that 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 tactile uh, experience is uh, probably one of the most important things we, we provide uh, as tour participants. Or, I mean, tour directors, but also, I mean, you can do it. But make sure you do touch it. 
because it's a kind of an interesting experience. So, is this uh, is this a private joke? So Anne Marie, the infamous Dr. Anne Marie Terrace, says, Terrace, can you oh, come yeah. help me carry my groceries? I saw her, I saw her in Vegas, and uh, she had a whole bunch of water bottles at a convenience store. Remember the convenience store that was just really cool? Really this was the Bally's, the weird Bally's year. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So we were there, and she's got all these, juggling all these waters. I think there was a couple on her head, and she was holding, and I said, can I help you with your water? And she goes, no, I'm from New York. I do this all the time. So. <laughs> <laughs> well eve i yeah i want to thank eve here i'm trying to dip into our chat too uh this is right this is like i got to do a little volunteerism last year with tours because the voyager doc perks for some of the high-end uh premium donors was uh some of the perk rewards were they were tours they called them away missions in la and they weren't the way that i do our days in terrace we they were Everybody go here, get yourself there, and you, we'll tell you where to go. And they had an actor or two there. Sometimes the actor was connected with the site. Sometimes mm -hmm. they didn't have one available. And I, so I donated two, one at, at Santa Monica Pier and at Bronson Canyon and came. But I did my whole spiel and brought all the docs and gave all the background. And yep. and uh, they did four or five of those, you know. And uh, at, at Bronson cave in canyon somebody came over to me and said larry could you have done all of these this week yeah <laughs> well we you're i mean your knowledge is huge <clears throat> well i mean i i just that's what i you know because again people can go to vasquez rocks on their own so thank you eve it was a pleasure to pleasure to meet a whole new bunch of people and uh, outside our normal circle but i mean people can research and go to vasquez on their own they can go to tillman on their own you know the right. the common ones and the ones that people know but so you if you're going to ask people to pay for something you need to give them a lot more value yeah, for yeah, what it, you know right. what they're getting yeah i mean that's what that's basically and that's i'm gonna gush about you larry because your knowledge is un unbelievable and whenever we go to a, a a site even if it's an old one that we've done there before you, there's always something new i learn or pick up from you uh and i've been traveling with you for years now so um mm -hmm. just to have that knowledge with us whenever we go somewhere is special yeah so you might not be able to get larry on your uh on your uh, your tour but you can you can go on your tour and uh, uh but larry when you we are on on this tour it is spectacular <clears throat> to have you there well i mean uh, you know facebook and instagram people are always going to vasquez look where we are and when they're in la they go but that's what my you know we have the big tour that we do every so often we can we can build up enough demand for it we have to let it rest every two or three years. Maybe as we let this, as as we come out of COVID, which put a big dent in things, obviously. Yes, obviously, yeah. And then uh, as more and more people are aware of this, uh, you know, the cruise has gotten big now. There's no licensed conventions anymore. So uh, the crew, you know, so, but but it's really, people are doing their own thing. And I, we, it's amazing how many people are just now like, um, I, I see, thank you, David. How do we get involved with this tour? Uh, stay tuned. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> stay, stay tuned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and Mel, hey, Melanie, backlot at Paramount. Yes, indeed. And here's the thing: you can go to Paramount and take the two-hour tour, and they're really good about, especially now, about saying, "Does anybody have any interest, special interest?" And if somebody in the group tour, whether you're doing the regular one or the high-end VIP, if you say Star Trek, they have a, like a manual that they've collected tidbits and 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 the pages. Most of the time, my experience has been that most of the pagers are not just blow off kids killing time till they can get a job somewhere on the lot. I mean, they're doing that, but yeah. a lot of them really, really, they're, they're judged, they're graded, they're overseen, and they really do, they really are sincere about wanting to help people because they know people come from all over the country. And it may, especially yeah. the pandemic, and especially with all the hassles that Paramount has been in with the Viacom divorce, I call it, all you Trekophiles and, and Portales know me and TTLers. And now that the Viacom divorce has been restitched together and things are sorting out and Paramount's trying to get back in the game. So they really want a good customer look and they'll give you a great tour. And if you say Star Trek, they will point things out. But I will just say it's not like being there with me or me and Terrence. <laughs> yeah, 100%. I, I was going to say that they are totally professional, though, because they they are. Uh, um, yes. I think that a lot of them use it as a means to get into the film industry, you know, so they're, they're, they're really trying their best. So their, their tours are great, but you're right. I mean, there, and, and then of course, uh, Dave Rossi stops by every once in a while too. And that's 
really what fills the whole thing. So, you know, so, we... So Dave Rossi, the last tr Star Trek veteran still working on the lot, who works in Paramount Park's research and development, when we when we can, and I think he's done it every time, he'll yeah. we'll try to either, he'll either come over on his lunch break or he'll adjust his lunch and come and talk to everybody. And he just piles on what I'm doing, which is, you know, even more yeah. so. And that's uh, exactly, and, and his stories add to the whole thing. So mm -hmm. um, not to say you can't do it, like I said, uh, there's tons that you can do, but yeah. Well, what stories, one? Yeah, the, the so the then, one thing is course, Bobby you, Clark's stories also. Yeah. Add to them or, well, that that's why we're adding more people to the big tour next year. But just yeah. to say real quick, at Paramount, uh, if you say you're a Star Trek fan, they'll throw in what they can, but it depends on the you know depends on the guard. It depends on the page. Your your tour leader it depends on them. What's been good is every time we've been on there, they always have. Even though we're doing it, uh, we have somebody with us. The first year was one person. Yeah. In 2014, it was two people. In 2016, it was three people. And every yeah. time, I worry <clears throat> that they that they are want to they want to do their tour and show off this big group. And and what I want to do is cram as much Trek in as I can. And yeah. maybe yeah. you want to know where Rudolph Valentino's secret tunnel was under the lot, but that's yeah. not what much what our people want to hear. But you know what's been great, Terrace, and you're laughing. But every time. I managed to say something to one of the people or maybe the head page who's with us. And yeah. they're like, they're like, Oh no, we're listening because we're yeah. going to take everything you say and add That's it right. to our That's notes. Right. Yeah. And I'm like, it's, Oh, cool. So yeah. It is funny to watch you uh, <clears throat> joust with these tour directors. Cause it's like, they want to say stuff. And then they're like, who's this guy taking over our tour? And it's funny because every time I warn them, I say, well, like, no, I mean, you, you, you arrange, yeah. it's your prearranged thing. So it's like, yeah, I, I know. And I, but I say, he's going <laughs> to talk a lot, you know, he's going to, he's going to talk a lot. And so you got to let him talk and, and, uh, but you'll learn a lot. So I think now that, that the last time they had three, they were actually quieter when they had two than when they had two, because they were trying to say, Oh, and I, and this, let me well, talk. But then I, like, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. And then now I'm like, no, no, no. I want you to do your thing, but only in a limited. Now, place. having said that, there was the, the biggest thing I ever, the one thing that blew me away. In fact, I was angry, not at the tour guide. The first year in 2012, when they took us over and showed us, and I don't have the picture in here, you could still see the paint where oh, the yeah. Desilu numbers had been painted over for Paramount yeah. in a different color, yeah. but you could still see the stage 9-10, yeah. the blue under the Paramount tan with the new numbers painted also. And my jaw dropped and I screamed and that was 2012. And I said, I've been here for 20 years and nobody ever showed me that. I never right. knew that. Nobody, I was like, right. anyway, but now I do. And so I think, but do. that's, and that's a good example of the stuff that if you do it on your own, you really need to look at where you're at. Because when we discovered that, uh, it was, it was like, oh my God, we're definitely in the right place. And, and, uh, this experience, this tactile experience that we're trying to have just increased. So make sure you're, if you do it, when you do it by yourself, look around and take your time. Don't rush in and, and say, okay, there's the, you know, there's Starfleet right there, but let's get out of here. Like really take your time and look around. The tree's there. Is the, I think the tree is still there, right, Larry? What tree? Which I don't tree? think they cut it down. I think it's still there. It, Which it was, tree? Uh, um, Picard and uh, the car, uh, oh. gardener's trees. The Boothby tree? Yeah, Boothby trees. Yeah. This, like well, it's still what? there, like now, <laughs> even today. Like, yeah, that tree. Well, that's still here's there. the thing. It was th that tree was still there and was getting bigger. And guess what? Then I was back with one of our day tours and right. it was gone. And I did a whole little, Ooh. not a TikTok, but I said, oh no, the Boothby tree is gone. I was like, and then a couple of years later, I came back and they had replanted a sapling. So it's like, okay, Booth B2 oh. is here. Oh, good, good. Okay. So that's, here. Yeah, that's the question. And that, see, that makes it really hard if you didn't, if you don't know all these little yeah. intricacies of where that was filmed and everything. But take your time is what I'm saying. Yeah. You're going to well, do it by yourself. Go the, slow. Uh, the cool thing is that when we do our tour, I have stills. We have, if it's the big bus, we have video on a video screen in the bus. And yeah. we can get everybody kind of you know refreshed. Yeah. And if we have a long ways to go, we try not to have long gaps on the bus, but when we go out to Vasquez Rocks and it's 40 minutes, and mm -hmm. we'll show a chunk of the episode. Sometimes we've even, you know, like Star Trek Four or whatever. Here's the thing for everybody at home, I want to say, you know, you can do it. Everybody, I think so many people famously know this that Desi Lou 
owned 40 acres down in Culver City, Desilu Culver, where the pilots were shot on stages, the cage and the where no man. And then when they got their series order, they came up to Desilu uh, Gower, Gower Street, which now is the, the paramount part of Desilu. Um, but famously, even after that, they were using, you know, Desilu assets. They didn't have to pay rent. And parts of shows, especially first season, second season on the original series, were shot down there, which is also where, yes, Mayberry from Andy Griffith was. It's where Stalag 13 was from Hogan's Heroes and Camp um, Henderson from, from uh, Gomer Pyle was all down there. And you can see, like, and famously, everybody loves it when the, you think they're in New York City in 1930, but Kirk and Edith walk by Floyd's Barbershop. And this was, and I should have brought this up. There's even a nod to that in Picard when Dave Blass and all the Golden Era guys in art went crazy. And when they're downtown at the 10 Forward Bar and walk out on the street, you see a Floyd's Barbershop. Do you really? I miss yes. that. That's great. Yes. And you see, a, it's a modern kind of booth, but you see a thing for 21st Street Mission. Oh, that's um, awesome. Which was Edith's, you know. But it's this is this, so this is a famous thing. People love to say, huh? Now, of course, 20 acres, all the sets of Mayberry, and they're all gone. It's all not only are they gone, the lot got too expensive to be the real estate became more valuable than the shooting value. And so in the 80s, it was bulldozed, and now there's like modern industrial warehouse thing. But you can go down and stand there and you can orient yourself to the hill behind. Uh, the hill behind the Landrew clock tower building was the building it was the shooting place for um the atlanta scenes from gone with the wind <laughs> right and you can look at the gone with the wind still you can look at the still from uh landrew from return of the archons and the hill is still behind there you can you can orient that but the reverse of this the floyd's barbershop is you can be on mayberry and look it's the 21st street mission right over there Edith yeah. Keeler was lurking around in May. I mean, it goes both ways is what I'm saying. It's yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah. And this is all things you can do at home, watching episodes and go track and go look at sites. And, and then, you know, you can plan, you can totally go, or you can be in Mary watch it. Well, this is not a scene they're lining up here, but there's Andy's courthouse right there. See, uh, yeah. which we don't we know. We were here, right? This is the one. Uh, no, this, was, this doesn't exist. Oh, okay. Can, I've been down there. I've taken people down there to say, Nothing to see, but you know you're standing on the place where they were, and we can get oriented. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, it's good stuff. And so we were talking about so research. So there's a lot of people, places, places you can find. Like this is a guy who has a site. I would tell you what it is, but I've forgotten. But this is a guy in San Francisco. This saved me some time because it does get confusing with Starfleet Academy and headquarters, and the bridge is there. But when you really get to the nitty gritty, it's like, wait, are they looking? back at the city or are they over here looking at and we've the modern era shows have really really nailed this down big time in the different eras and the cg model yeah. and they horseshoe bay stop it drag to move horseshoe bay is up here and that's where everything is pretty much set aside from if you are uh you know if you're in good old hello star trek four this is obviously where and, and this is 1986 so it's modern day this is not over. So Horseshoe Bay and, and Starfleet Academy headquarters are supposedly on that side, of the the north side, the Marin County. Yeah. But the side toward San Francisco, where the Presidio is, where Data's head was buried <laughs> and Mark Twain's gun, uh, that's on this side. And this rope, this is right along there where you could you can go yourself if you want to and try to find the place. I've even some, seen some people do impromptu, really goofy looking cosplay where they try. <laughs> Yeah, that's such a great shot. Uh, oh, or not. So silly. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, this is from 2016. So the tricky thing is it's almost always foggy on the bridge. Like there are only a few days. If you're in San Francisco, whether you're Star yeah. Trekking or not, and you get a clear shot of the bridge, oh, my God, go take it. It's like, it's like um, Mount Whitney, Mount... Um, yeah. Tallest mountain in Alaska. You never know. And, and, it, and it can change on a dime there, too. And temperature too. It could be super warm, and then boof, you're like all bundled up. Oh my god! I didn't have any terry cloth, so I just used my <laughs> jeans jacket. So it's a, a good shot. shot. Yeah, it's a very good shot. Yeah, it's a it's yeah. a well and nothing. Yeah. and don't. It's a hard thing. It would be a hard thing for me. It's a hard thing for me, I guess I should say. Um, 
don't worry about dressing up in public and going out and doing that kind of stuff, even if it's not like a Star Trek thing, like a tour. Like the tour, of course, if you got a whole bunch of people with you, it's less stressful. But yeah, go on. Just go and do it. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at the chat, but I'm also watching that we're halfway through our hour now. Now, here's the other thing. If you're if you're researching at home, though, it has limits. I found this. This is not from my collection, but I found it online. This is just awesome. Uh, there's always, for one thing, it's been time. Like, if you're looking at original series shots or even mm. Next Generation DS9 Voyager, it's been 20 years, 30, yeah. 40, 50 years. And landscapes oh. change, weeds grow up, buildings are knocked down, things build in around. And even, and then aside from what's happened naturally, you got to remember that what you see filmed sometimes was, well, was, was enhanced. And not just with CG, but I love this from Star Trek V. <laughs> right. Sometimes exactly. extra rocks were brought in, you know. Extra rocks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. You know, and that's really the key. That's why I love working with you, Larry, is because you can see things like, okay, it was right here. And this is this is the actual rock. And you're like, what do you mean this is the actual rock? It doesn't look like this at all. And then you show the frame and you're like, oh, that is an actual rock. But they happen to put this big ass rock here too okay. or the bush okay, or rock. whatever yeah yeah that's it right the bush the or yeah, this... in vasquez rocks there's that scrawny little tree that they break the limb off yes. of and it's you it's obviously you're there now you're like there's no tree <laughs> out here <in> the <laughs> we remember we now here's the thing gang we went the first time we did the tour we went to um the pinnacles we went to yeah. this film site but we, yes, right. yeah, the last part of it, we had to, uh, we had to watch from afar because we were in the bus and the road was so washboarded. Um, mm -hmm. cause I was like, oh, we did our research and people go out there and there's parking and everything. But our bus driver yeah. said, uh, we're not taking the bus on that road. <laughs> yeah. It was way too far out. We, we looked at it and it was like way out into the desert. Well, we had like a couple yeah. of miles away. So there was definitely a thing we could see. And we had been at something. We had yeah. stopped at another part they'd like, used. But the part where they're walking in, and it's like really anal detailed, but that's what I want to do. The part where they're right. walking in and out of the standing rocks, Cybok and, and Kirk and Spock. Um, that was the part we were really trying to get to. But that was like the that was like a, a dirt road too far. <laughs> Right. That's now exactly. your you SUV, you your SUV might get out there. So, but anyway, yes. but just to know, yeah, trees and rocks come in and enhance the scene sometime. And uh, someone does talk about uh, nuclear vessels, and that's a good another good point. Mm -hmm. Is that yes, we are, aren't going to the Enterprise, and we're not. Uh, not um, e even even the uh, um, the it's the Hornet that's there now, right? The and Ranger. So, the ranger is there mm -hmm. okay but uh um we do go to the street where they talk like we do we do the the kirk uh double dumbass on oh, you yeah street. that's so <clears throat> that kind of stuff is really specialized because like it's just a street but you're like no this is the filming this is where they filmed that particular well scene. the triangle so building we talk about that a little bit about there's the green uh, triangle but well the fun thing about san francisco is so la was here because it was near the studio and they could run to different places or a little right. bit further San Francisco, Star Trek Four famously went there. Um, yeah. But what happens with San Francisco is it's more a case of Starfleet's there. So it's a magnet for stories, including um, yeah. beaming in and out of uh, <laughs> the Bell Riots. Yeah, that's right. We, did, we went to that yeah, corner. Nothing of the Bell Riots show on DS9 <laughs> was filmed in San Francisco, but they mention it and things are standing in. And so we had the real, we had these show mentions like the Clift right. Hotel where Dax is staying with the with the Hoity Toy, you know the one yeah. percent she stuck with, and then Cisco and Bashir are down here with everybody else. Well, the right. hotel she was at, we actually went by and we all did a picture out. We all sat by the outside. Yeah, it was that was a case of are you a completist? Are you being really anal about? Yeah, that thing? was really detailed, like down to the water. But we also, I mean, um, uh, we went to where the water the the fountain was too. We went to that one. And we went to How about LA. Which, oh, we went to the uh, isn't it Pol what is it Polk and uh, yes. the two intersection where they keep on beaming in and out. Yeah, uh, through time. Where, well, uh, Kieran and O'Brien are beaming. They have the hippies. They have the jazz age. They have yeah, all the different eras. We stopped there and took a picture on that corner, which is a real corner. Yeah, 
which is incredibly silly, but uh, no, and that's still something, you know, awesome. That's something everybody can do. You can do on your own when you're in San Fran. You have to, yeah. Um, so here, but the primary yeah. thing, you, you can look online. That's great for you. What I like to rely on is primary source. So this is like what the crews would use in the hand-drawn. Today they had digital maps. And I've got some from Picard last season, thank goodness, for around LA. But, um, and of course, Picard's the only series that was shot in LA. All the other modern ser- live actions are in Toronto. So Discovery and Strange New worlds are all in toronto but this was 94 this was a location around bakersfield for the a lot of the horse <laughs> the horse barn riding stuff for picard and uh kirk to do shatner and uh, and patrick uh this was like what the trucks the location trucks and everybody were using basically to get to their sites that and also the relative distances all the way up to lone pine and whitney portal where the kirk cabin was way up in the sierras on the back side of the sierras um which is also where the uh, basics from Voyager's two-parter, where the Voyager landed, where they actually yep. shot in the weird rocks. That was up that way, too. And do you remember the other thing that's shot up there, Terrace? Godzilla. Didn't we watch Godzilla was there, too? <laughs> <laughs> Might have been. No, um, Cork and Odo in the ascent when they were climbing. Yeah, the that's right. Yes. Cork and Odo climbed the mountain, climbed the mountain. Yeah, climbed the mountain. yeah when uh, he breaks his leg. Yes, yes, yes. And yeah, I, yeah. and that's a perfect example there of gang when you are looking uh, and you're trying, you think, oh, look, they shot all these shots. What they do on location on TV, especially, is what they did there was they found, and the waterfall is there. So you go, oh, well, here's the waterfall. That's obvious. It's beautiful. You're in beautiful country for one thing. Yeah, it is amazing. But you figure it out is- as you look around that what they basically did was stick the camera in one place. And then what's the cheapest thing to do to get the most bang for the buck? They put the camera down. And as you recreate the shots, you realize they just turn it like 10 degrees. <laughs> and they didn't even go far. Like they, you'd think that they would go deep into the woods or something, but I had to carry gear. Right the, yeah. It, it was, yeah. it was like on right on box. the in the parking lot. Like if yeah. it's just like, you, you got trucks, go who wants to carry crap, lot? heavy crap, <laughs> co- co- cords and cables and cameras. Oh my. Who wants to carry yeah. all that a hundred yards into the woods and uphill? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> we got it. We got to. Sh- well, it's not, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's also time and money. The further you go, the more time yeah. you're burning. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, so it's so yeah, on a TV, unions or whatever, non unions on a TV yeah. budget, especially, it makes sense. So it was like we got all, we were looking at all the camera stills, had them on my thing, and it was like, and the even the here's the the pinnacles through the trees. It was like, oh, there they are right there, bing, 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 and yeah, yep, they're standing. Yeah. So anyway. So those are and it was wonderful popular. discoveries to make, people. And the, the, I, I like that particular location because all those different places that they used are all in that place. Like you mm-hmm. think that uh, Kirk's cabin is it, like it, it, you know, definitely in Colorado, and really, you know, the trees are everywhere and everything. But no, it's just this one section of where they filmed it. And then if you go a little bit lower, it looks like desert. And then a little bit lower than in like Badlands. Like it's just, it's a spectacular place to film. Yeah, up there. Yeah. Well, Lone Pine is famous for, there's a Western film museum there in Lone Pine. And, and the guy, but the guy who was running it at the time, uh, he was very well aware of where, and outside of Lone Pine, a little further down was the dry lake bed where they shot uh, the opening scenes of Star Trek V. Oh, right. On the desert, the, the Nimbus 3 desert scene with the, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, the lone man on the horse, where they're, he's Shatner's trying to evoke Lawrence of Arabia on five dollars <laughs> on a forty-seven dollar budget. Um, <laughs> but no, but so but he, they, there's tons of westerns. There's tons of film. If you're into westerns, you can go up there, and there's tons of research, and they have a museum, and there's all kinds of. But he knew his odd, like science fiction movies that were filmed up there. Uh, scenes yeah. from um, I want to say two thousand one, but also uh, uh, Pl- a Planet of the Apes, the original. Yep. Up there too. Anyway, so they were big on uh, on Star Trek too. So here's a, so updating this a little bit. Yes, again, people on their socials when they see when you see Star Trek ha- happening, report it. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes, exactly. And that's what happened when they filmed season two. All that downtown Los Angeles stuff. So somebody grabbed. So here's you know Jerry and uh, Michelle on the bus, and uh, apparently you know. Kirk Thatcher's going to punk on the bus is going to be over here with them. But somebody shot this through the window. And while they were there, they were alerted. So the same person, this batch of images that ran through. And so here's the bus they're filming on. Here's a crew, you know, catching them from the back. And here's the police escort they have to hire. Here's junk on the sidewalk. But this was enough here where I was like, oh, look, oh, look, 
and you know looking at some of these chain stores and trying to figure out where they might be together and boom you can use your good old google earth now that we didn't have yep. years ago yeah. and figure out where they're along grand avenue so yeah. i was like oh okay i'm already getting a head start <laughs> these are not the most exciting emotional resonance uh <laughs> moments but we got it now since then uh, Picard people have gotten me call sheets and their location maps, and we've got everything narrowed down. But you could do this, you know, on your own sitting there if you were of a mind to. Yeah, and and just pop down. Oh, that's a, such a great shot. <laughs> it's also on the tour. Yeah. So what? A... <clears throat> yeah. So the year we did all the downtown LA stuff from different places. So this is Seneca. This is 2016. But this is you know Rain Robinson, Sarah Silverman. The fountain is here. This wacky. So here's the still like we had on, we, we'd carry around with us. And if anybody wanted to recreate things, so Seneca did, we did this. This is cutting me off over here. I look, I'm, I'm not looking too happy, but this is the kind of thing you can do on your own, you know, and, but it, you know, if you've got tour guides with you <clears throat> that know what they're doing, hopefully you can, <laughs> you can do all that. Fa the other, the other bugaboo about LA is like traffic and timing and all of that. Yeah. So that's one thing we're, we always try to do. Always add an hour to, everything that you want to do <laughs> you can go for coffee if you have a lot of, a lot of time so. look at your gps you know, it's minutes not miles don't yeah, look at right. five yeah. miles and think it's five minutes between no it's no not. it's not it's yeah. uh oh well i was gonna i did my That's wrong such a great shot. Really uh, so oops so well, yeah boom so when we've taken the big when um uh, the big tour when we've gone out we've got bobby clark out there talking um, which is just awesome. And he'll talk about the day that the other thing about Vasquez though, is it's not just about arena and the Gorn, you know? So we've got the information about where, well, Friday's child where the boulders Friday's go child. up to, I go up to, well, another guy who did some research called it table rock. I call it communicator rock because mm -hmm. people bring their communicators like Friday's Put child yeah. Set them down. You've got the same angle. We even had like some fake, we didn't have fake boulders, but we pretended. We've had people go. Ah! <laughs> we did. We, we we did a video when it shook the video a little bit too. Yeah. People don't cosplay as capellans because those carpets were hot. I got to yeah, tell you. <laughs> well, this is. I mean, I, but I, the Gorn, I will say brought, it, brought a Gorn cannon, had it made up, and had people pose with Bobby and the Gorn right. cannon, and gone over to yeah. where they filmed the Gorn cannon sites, and yeah. I don't have the Gorn. The Gorn cannon disintegrated. I do have a couple other props, but. This one, I think I will put a pat ourselves on the back here. And this is one of those experiences that just makes it a little bit better. Like you can go see Vasquez Rocks, can be right where this all happened and see exactly, pretty much exactly where they filmed if you do your research really well. But having Bobby there uh, and Larry just makes it such a cool experience. Like he's, he's, you know, he's an old cowboy basically and he talks about oh i rode you know, i rode horses a little but i wouldn't say i was an old cowboy yeah <laughs> and he <laughs> um he uh you know it's just to have Things an actor there or hear you. a stuntman there or someone that was there <laughs> during the filming is spectacular like uh it adds so much to the experience and that's basically what we're trying to do every day with with the tour yeah. is that yeah. Uh, when we have Armin, we talk about Shakespearean uh, stuff. And when we Tim uh, Tim Russ comes up to the uh, Griffiths Observatory mm -hmm. uh, there with us and talks about astronomy, but then also talks about the filming shots. And 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 Larry lines us up and shows us where it was filmed from. And yeah, that is one of the really cool things that and uh, that the and then you go to Bronson Canyon and there's 18 things and you just like turn a different angle and you line it up and yeah, that's yeah, another place came. that's great crazy yeah. right i'm gonna I mean, throw this yeah i was gonna say real quick this is and i'm way back behind in the chat guys i'm sorry but linda said ask a question do i know where the fishing scenes were filmed for emissary yes the disney golden oaks ranch boom okay go ahead terrace i cut you off no 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 not at all we have like 15 I, minutes I, 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 I left so that, yeah. i'm just, I'm yeah. just yeah. timing yeah no no you do this i have no idea how to how to do anything on the chat so i'm <laughs> glad that you're doing both because i'm not i'm reading them well, I let, so yes, so one of the cool things is because this is why we're adding for the big tour next year. Now, I do my day tours, I offer those, I'll tell you about that at the very end. But, uh, um, and I'm doing a special one for people who are a lot of people, somebody might even be on the chat today coming to the cruise, they're in LA already. Some people came early and went to uh, Gallifrey 
won the Hukon last uh, last weekend, just this weekend, right. which yep. I, I was there Saturday. But um, a lot of people are already in L.A. They're having extra days, so I thought I'd throw in a day. We've got 10 going on Thursday. I keep watching, hoping that the rain is lingering around. I hope I heat. I, it's right now it's tending toward the evening. So hopefully it'll leave us alone in the day mm -hmm. <clears throat> and be light. But, um, but I do the day tours, but some of these with the big crowd here, you're seeing and Bobby are when we do the big, we've renamed it the West coast away mission. Cause it's going to be LA and San Francisco because yeah. we did San Fran special as a separate for the 50th because things went crazy in the 50th. Uh, I'm going to bop along a little more here. Uh, so this is Santa Monica Pier, which again is big tourist site, fun to yep. go to. What is that? What do you call it, Terrace? You have an option for all your tours where if you've got the fan or the interested person. Oh, yeah, the parallel and, universe. So if you've parallel got a universe. Yeah. Yeah. So if anybody has a uh, non geek spouse, they can come and I'll help them arrange go shopping or to go to a sporting a sports event or whatever. So uh, they don't even have to hang out with the geeks if they don't want to uh, or come for dinner later or I arrange other things too. So that's one of the things that uh, Christine, my wife, said you need to do this because uh, you won't get uh, a buy-in from a, a non-geek spouse. So, what's, yeah. what's awesome about most of the, a lot of the Trek sites we go, some at least, but like Santa Monica Pier is fun for anybody. So if you're yeah. sitting there trying to find, you know, the statue, the seahorse statue, Ch uh, Ch Ch Chikete, Janeway and Chicote and Tuvok in Paris. Sadly, the hot dog on a stick booth closed down, but in 2014, it was actually it was there. there. Huh? It's not there. How disappointing. I know. In the last couple of years, I think it was a pandemic victim. That's. Oh, yeah. Okay. I, I mean, there, there, see, this is the thing, gang. It's like, it's like the natural landscape changes the other. That's why it's so cool to actually find mementos. Mm -hmm. Of course, the Voyager was shot in 96. So, mm -hmm. but even that's starting to, you know, that's starting to pile yeah. up. But this was, this was fun to do. What else have I got here? Oh, so, mm -hmm. oh, well, speaking of things that are no longer there. So. In the old days, the two bars that everybody at Desilu would go to were Nicodell's, which was on their side of pair of, of uh, Melrose, and Lucy's El Adobe Cafe, which had been around since the 60s and has a wall of celebrity photos and even politicians. And um, we took the, there's Rod, came over and joined us. This was our welcome dinner spot. We may have to find a new one when we do the big tour because uh, Lucy's closed in the pandemic. And they may not reopen, which is sad because on the back porch was yeah. an autographed photo from Gene here. And we would um, jump. So there's Mr. Terrace and Rod and my friend John Champion came over that night. And uh, Stevie and Chris, his son. And uh, so I'm showing you all this thinking that this may not be. This is cool. And I'm glad for everybody who was there got to get there. But Lucy's, yeah. we may it may be another casualty of time passing. So, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, took that. A, I had a, uh, I had a, I did a special tour last year. Rod asked me to do a, not a, not a location tour, film tour, but a locations of Gene Roddenberry's life points. He was born yeah. in El Paso, but for his centennial uh, around town. So they, he moved here when he was a little kid. So most of his life was in LA. His dad was an LA cop. Of course, that's what he did first when he in, in and out of the war, when he was a pilot. Mm -hmm. But all of his life points and then into Hollywood and all that. And we organized his personal places and his workplaces. And it was a two-day tour and yep. had a great group with that and around in a van. And, uh, you know, all the all the bars that he went to, Cock and Bull was another one. So much stuff had changed. But some things were very scary, uh, you know, scary that it was the same. But that's just what you deal with. That's, yeah. you know, what you have to deal with when you're doing history. But that was a that was really a lot of fun. Um, what are we doing? We got 10 minutes left. I let me see if I can find. Um, but yeah, so I made a list, Terrace. I did this for our big tour, but when I started yeah. doing my Trekland treks, I still can't. Why am I still backwards today? I can't handle it today. Um, I made a list, and before Picard season two, I had about 42 or 43 from Bakersfield, which is you know an hour and a half north, right? Two hours from Bakersfield all the way down to Orange County. And the bulk of them here in central Los Angeles and just adjacent over 40 places, you know, the Vasquez rocks and the Tillman's aren't everything. And there's all kinds of obscure places. 
And thankfully, I have just about all the, the Berman era call sheets, which is great for tracking because some things are, you know, it's somebody's house. So if you want the Blood Oak Klingon house, that really, that's actually a Frank Lloyd Wright architectural house, the miniature. Oh, really? So people who are Frank Lloyd Wright fans go buy it. Yeah, and sure. Star Trek yeah. and Klingon fans go buy it, you know, where Dax and the three old Klingons had their battle. And it's, it's very tiny and you just pull off on the thing and it's there. But the people that own the house, they're thinking of the Frank Lloyd Wright people. <laughs> they're yeah, not thinking true. of Star Trek people, but they're very – the last time I went by, it wasn't it wasn't owned at all. So we kind of prowled around a little bit. The guy across the street said, oh, it's it's up for sale. Go. So I, hopefully the new owners are as open to – they can't stop the flow of people. They just say, here's some information. Stay in the driveway. Please don't ring our doorbell. Don't, yeah, yeah. You know, but, it must be it, pretty hard to have a famous house in the driveway. It's just right there in a little little place. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the chat's just rolling. Is there anything else we should mention? I was just. I think the the. Uh, well, I, let's let's mention. Uh, I don't know. Can you put the link for the tour in the chat? I don't know if you sure, can. Sure, sure, sure. You can put that. I don't even know how to do that though. So. You you have your page. You copy and paste it, and you put it in the chat at the bottom. At the at the bottom. I got yeah. nothing on the bottom. You do it. Okay. It's this well, yeah, I tell you what, I'll put the, uh, I'll put the, oops, that's me here. I'll put us, I'll put us up first. Okay. We just changed. Talk about how we COVID is slowly is unraveling slowlier than we thought slowly yeah. or more slowly slowlier. than we thought. So talk about this while I hunted, while I'll hunt the. Uh, sure. So uh, there's a, lo a lot of reasons why we included, uh, as, as you can see, we have, we have guests. Uh, we're, the goal is to have a guest every, every day. And so we're still working on our guests all the way through. At we're we're pending with some. A lot of folks know we're they're checking schedules. So right, exactly. So uh, um, and some some uh, some days twice a day. But the reason why we're headed to San Francisco is that we added. We thought to add uh, not only at the LA sites, uh, but we thought we'd go up to uh, Chateau Picard uh, uh, on the way up, uh, drive up to uh, san francisco so that's a good good little hike and then eventually we'd go to monterey bay and uh, go to the aquarium there um of course th that is four again uh, like we were talking about before but um we we'll also do things we try to expand um the experience so not only do we go to the uh the aquarium but prior to going to the air care uh, Aquarium, we have a private whale watching tour. So that's the kind of experiences that we're trying to do. We're trying to have a cool place that's a, a Star Trek filming site, uh, a cool, mm -hmm. cool experience that is Star Trek adjacent. So the whale watching experience and then have an actor or actress with us for par a portion of that day. So each day is, uh, is and the, the guest, goal is... Should day. I just say, and I know, like yeah. I said, I mentioned the Voyager doc. If you were on the Voyager... Uh, the part, the perk, uh, wait, you know, some days you'd get people who were there. It was just cool to see some of the actors and celebrities and maybe get out of even a convention setting and have them out in live action in a certain, but they weren't necessarily connected to the place you were visiting. Right. And we've, what we do is when I do on my own and what we do here is always try to have somebody uh, who was there, who was in the scene, who was there. And if we don't have an actor, we have one of the assistant directors or director or somebody right. who's there like Bobby, who was, um, who was there who can talk about it and really bring it alive to you. And a lot of the sites have more than one, like uh, Vasquez is that way. And Bronson Canyon's that way. There's several, yeah. can, you, you have several choices of people you can get there. That's right. So for whatever time though, it is, it's um, so it really, yeah, again, enhances it's living history as much as it is. I mean, there's nothing like, I love the look on people's faces when we walk through the gate at Tillman and they turn around and they see that angle for the first, I've got video of some of my day tour people and when you come into Vasquez and you come up and you can even see them from the backside as you right. drive around. But when you come over the hump and you come down and the look on people's faces when they go, yeah, I, I, you know, it's it's amazing. And the, even the little the little you're driving along and it's oh, and it's a house somewhere and you pull up and you turn around and people go or you get the you get your pad up there or your video and you're going, look, see, it's and like, oh, my God. Yeah. And you're right there. I think, yeah, that's I, I like those experiences when we're when when it comes alive you know what i mean so, i just that, uh, i just put the link in for the big tour for the west coast there you tour. Go. yeah that's perfect yeah and then we have sometimes we have props like larry said we had the uh 
the cannon when we went to see, well, we'd probably get another cannon, but we also have <laughs> this pair. We went down to Space City. Yeah, we went down to Grumman. And Spock and his red tile wall. You had to That's put it on your right. face. We were doing face face splat. Oh, there we have it. Yeah. Like that. Here, hold on, hold on. Oh. Let me get you in all your glory. Do I'm it again. There. I think it looks better on their chest. Actually, it should go in the back, really. Like that. Whoops, whoops, whoops. Hold on, hold on. Sorry, I'm... uh. Five. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Okay. You could be on the back. Yes. Yeah. Well, and then you would, uh, this is you uh, canon. Larry made this magazine. Okay. That's for the uh, Q continuum. So we always have some fun stuff like that. Going on. We had everybody got to take a picture. You know, I've been the scarecrow, played the game. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Which and we've fun. been on the the patio of the Q continuum. So. Um, so, oh, so, uh, well, this is great. Uh, there's a ton of people in the question before we run out of time. We've got three minutes. I wanted to do a, can I do a plug for me? Yes. So that's us. And then anytime, anytime you're in LA with a day to spare or for business, for pleasure, whatever I, I decided after I met you, I thought, well, come on, people can go on a suicide tour of celebrity mansions. They can go on a graveyard tour for celebrities. There's something for everybody in LA Star Trek fans deserve something in LA. So if you're coming Thank to you. LA, get in touch with me. That list of 40 places, uh, we will work out a custom tour. For, we go to, I'll do four places in a day, just me and you and your group. And if you even have a group of six or eight, we'll get a van. But um, most of the time, it's just one or two or three people in a car. We're driving around, going to places. We have a lunch. Usually it's in and out because most people are from outside California. And that's an iconic, it's a fast lunch, but it's I, very California. And I pick you up at your hotel and take you back by. And we, it's the it's the personal treatment on a on an away mission that you've designed with my help. So if you're coming on a weekend, you know this place is closed on a weekend. Or if it's weekday, you're watching the rush hour traffic, and we ar arrange around that. So um, yeah, if you're if you're coming out, let me know. Um, here's the link for that. All it's pretty. If you go to my website, LarryNimichek.com, you can get the links to all to the big tour. It's right there and my day tours, uh, boom. But there's my link for Trekland Treks. And um, yeah, I'll do this. So anyway, so I'd love to see everybody as things open. We were just, I was just launching this when pandemic hit. So we've had, I've had eight or 10 or 12 folks do this. So hopefully as people find out about the whole, you know, whether a big one is on your plate, it's totally worth saving up, getting it on your calendar to do the big tour. Because if nothing else, again, you're with, you're with that group. This is this is yeah. just three people, <laughs> Helen and I Chris, think, and I've gone blank on his name. Yeah, I think if I could add one final thing uh, to this whole thing, uh, and it, no matter if you go on Larry's tour, you come come on the big one with both of us, or you go by yourself, just mm -hmm. I mean, when you've got a group it. like this, just do it. Like yeah. save a little bit of money, or save a lot of money if you're going to do a big tour or just have a goal and do that thing because as COVID has taught us, uh, you never know when we're going to be locked down again. You never know what, how life changes things, how life changes the places where you go, like the hot dog stand uh, or Lucy's or for that Lucy's, matter. Like yeah. you just don't know how things are going to change. I don't, so I don't want to be, yeah, I don't want to be morbid either, but you don't know when parts of the landscape and, you're be <laughs> and you don't know when i was going to say our human resources you don't know when you've got right. guests coming yeah. you don't know how much yeah. you know that's right so just um, do it just go and fill up your life and just uh do the things that you want to because time is limited and you only get one goal yeah yeah uh the, i will say our prior tours had been hooked into the beginning of vegas and we always yeah. would take our tour folks to, to Trek Vegas, to STLV. And we would go out to Valley of Fire yeah. and come in and then be there and Terrace with Concierge. The philosophy yeah. going forward is the, the convention scene got so wonky and we had mission and now we don't. And Vegas is there. And we just decided to make the tour a standalone event. So yeah. that's right. Yeah, that's that's why we're we're not attaching it to any conventions. I think that it just needs to be by itself. So and so we and need to. Uh, oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, I was just saying, uh, I yeah, think yeah. Uh, the whole thing about uh, goal yes. is what I'm trying to end on. So our hour is up. Uh, I'm going to say that everybody needs to go see, and I'm not sure what it is. Uh, maybe somebody will yell at me here. 
what the the next current event for virtual trek con is which is in another room obviously somewhere right. um so bye everybody thanks so much for joining us you should go see Thank the you. next virtual trek core thing if you want to hang and ask or maybe even re-ask a question we can hang on for a couple more minutes i don't want to keep anybody from the next nope. btc event yeah but if you want to ask us a question now when we could actually look at the chat and see your question sure. maybe we can spend another five minutes or so and do that don't you think Terrace? Yeah, I'm here. Are you, I'm here. Are you going to do that? Okay. Because yeah. I saw yeah. some fly by and uh, yeah. I know. You have one already. Is Trekland Tuesday on tomorrow? Oh, yes. So uh, should we? do we have to do an official goodbye first? See you oh, later. Okay. Everyone. Yes, yes. Thank you. Trek well, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Ciao. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, you got to. Uh, you do have a question about Trekland. Oh, I have to stay live or else the chat won't work. You and I can stay here, but I have to I'll have to keep the, the trick going. So uh what she say? We have 15 minutes. Oh, there's nothing until 15 minutes. Oh, really? Oh, Next really? Panel isn't 15 minutes. Oh, okay. Well then stay. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Don't leave us. <laughs> okay. Well, I told everybody okay. to go away. We could have then stopped. back to the point. Then back to now everybody's like yeah, running I, around. But ask oh, questions. Geez. Well, if Anne Marie says we're good, then we're good. I think she doesn't mean that in a philosophical way, just in a in a logistical way. I th um, I okay, so we take back all of our goodbyes. Well, um, why don't we answer? Uh, uh, you can ask Larry anything or <laughs> things about travel, <laughs> but you can't ask him anything. You can ask me about travel and geek stuff if you'd like, but Larry, you can ask him anything. Um, go find him <laughs> with everybody. Home. Okay, so we everybody's telling us we can stay, but nobody's asking a question. I, I okay. know I saw some no, questions. You, you, somebody asked if Trekland's going to happen tomorrow. Yes. Okay. Just, that absolutely. A, yes. That was a question. Regular Trekland's happening. Uh, even after the boy, these last two weeks have been insane. Ever since the drama around the Picard premiere, um, being awesome, but also whether it got oversold or not, or not oversold, but overstuffed or not, but that, and then everything this last week or so. Yeah, I, I, I will. No, I'm not going to admit it. Okay, I will admit it. I haven't watched Picard yet. Lisa's saying you who for the Voyager doc. I'm I'm scrolling backwards now. So awesome. What'd oh, you yeah. say? What'd you say, Terrace? I didn't watch Picard last night. I was gonna. But maybe that's gonna be tonight. Oh, here's a question. Charlotte says. Yes. The West Coast tour. Can uh, San Francisco Bay Area residents just participate in that part of the events? And if we join the tour, can we stay in our own homes in SF? I, I can. It's hard. I have to really try to juggle uh, costs. Um, so uh, one of the of advertising costs, things two are. costs that are really large in the tour. Uh, one's a, the cost of the actors and actresses, and the second is the cost of the the coach. Those are the two biggest ones. And then, then it the is. Yeah. <laughs> but those ones really need to be spaced out between ev everyone that's on the tour and divided by those. So if I offer just a little bit of a section, that person isn't paying for the coach. So I have to actually almost increase their price in order for the for the coach to be covered so in a way the answer is yes i could do it it's really hard it's probably better if you do the whole tour quite frankly yeah uh, um i'd like to say yes but it's it's just not it's it's yeah. not uh it's not now easy. in 2016 we offered them separate because we'd never done san francisco alone and it was, yeah, it was everybody yeah. was going crazy and that's yeah. why we said we should we should compact it to where right. there's a little bit of each one in. Since there's no convention people are going to later, right? And we're trying to make this more of an event on its own. And, but the difference was is that we didn't <laughs> travel by ground to San Francisco. We flew. We just flew so, in, hopped around, then flew out. Yeah, that's right. So that's in. why it's a little bit more difficult because we actually drive all the way up the coast, go to the Picard Vineyard, uh, then to Mont uh, Monterey Bay. And then you know whale watching and all that, and then San Francisco. So it, it's a it's a logistical thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yes, it was Kathy. Somebody asked me uh, back along the way. Uh, now I'm trying to find it. Um, maybe it will. Uh, well, that's uh, a good question. What? What did you see? You would take a Star Trek character on tour. Which would it be, and where would you take them? You answer. I'm trying to find chat questions. You answer that. 
Okay, I will ask that answer that question. Um, wow, I would take Darmok. I would take him to all the places that have relevance to my childhood and ask him how he talks about it. I would love the the whole vocabulary thing. You would have to bridge it over to get him halfway to care. Yeah, we'd have to fight a monster or something every place we go. Yeah, I like that idea. Uh, we'd, have so Robert. we'd have to fight a grizzly bear in Canada. <laughs> That's this right. was I'd forgotten this, Robert. I never got a chance to get there either. The uh, log cabin was torn. It sat there for ages since the eighties. The John uh, John Candy, John Belushi movie um, had been there, and just uh, within a year of being used, it was torn down. So I mean, once again, you have to get on the lot and on the, their tour and all that. But uh, go travel now. <laughs> just go travel. That's why yeah. some of the things that are still around that are amazing, or if they've been. Um, uh yeah 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 so Wardogheim has a uh thing don't forget to refresh and comment once the stream is over on i on our uh, google pants and his analytics need to know oh, the awesome oh thank you okay. thank you war dog heim that uh, is so very go good over, go to the that. youtube when we when it's there and when we finish this and leave a comment on the youtube after it's done so thank you thank you um uh oh <laughs> Sounds like something. So the chat pack is everybody who hangs with uh, with the seventh rule and the and all that bunch. Something like the chat pack, people can enjoy it. Can we all fit in your car? Hey, if you bring the whole chat pack, we'll get a as Terrace would say, a coach. A coach. Uh, we'll get a. We'll get a. Yeah. We'll go all the way, man. Uh, yeah. Let's see here. The day. Yeah, those sites. The. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, go on. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm just looking at. I was going to say that the, yeah. it's it's crazy that some of those sites are just gone. Like, and and it's not even like they don't do it on purpose. They just refurbish something, and and then all of a sudden they don't exist anymore. So yeah, go go travel. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to everyone who's been reminding us to like the videos this weekend. Absolutely, go to all the VCT videos and yeah. make a comment on all the videos and it will help the analytics for whoever whether it's yeah absolutely. you know seventh rule or vtc hosting it or my site or whoever's site is doing the hosting because it's individual that's why you have to hop from site to site every hour yeah but uh, it's important yeah, please, it's super important please do our economy yeah. functions now yes i think yes david i saw your earlier question robert's right on please share both the tour site links share the big tour share share a day tour both of them they're perfectly fine to go share that's the that's the idea yeah uh, robert did, i told the you of this, we're doing this as a business so yeah thank you put your link on there robert sure. oh yeah robert put your site link on here yeah put it up on the chat man robert's done a lot of robert's in vienna austria and he's spreading the joy of trek and also trek touring and his yeah. own research and travels is going up. Yeah, absolutely. Put it up on the chat. For uh, sure. Kathy D. Yes. When they visited Q hanging out at the gas station in the desert. They're that talking about awesome. the Me Magazine. Hold that up again. I'm so proud of that. My friend it Kevin. a great magazine. Oh, no. It's being attacked. Don't, don't mess that cover up. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, it was a little bashed up. But yep. yes, this what you were. This was it was awesome to be out, out on the. You know, it was a very strange place because right again, right next to the highway. Oh, you know what I should say? What we should do is we have Facebook pages. So there is a. You, you can go to Geek Nation towards the website, but you have a Facebook page where people post. Pictures. I would love that. Please come. And we and have like a fiftieth. Okay, we got to. I I need to find that. There's a. So one thing I have a Trekland Trex Facebook page. Right. That you you're welcome to look. The only people who are members are the people who have been on, so they can post pictures. But it's right, public; right. you can go see what people have done. Oh, mm -hmm. here's the thing, Tara. So I don't think yes. we, you remember this, and yes. I wish we had the big audience now. I've had people come on, um, a couple, and her thing was everywhere they went on their vacation, she had a Dixon Hill Picard Playmates figure, she had a Beverly Dixon Hill <laughs> figure, and she had a Tom Paris. Uh, uh, threshold <laughs> with nice. removable tongue. Anyway, her thing was everywhere they went, they put them and we took shots like we we're at Vasquez Rocks yeah. and they're in the foreground with the rocks behind it. That's a, That's thing. a great idea. And I was I with that. I was with one couple where they had to leave their cat behind. So they brought a stuffed cat with them 
And everywhere they went, they put their stuffed cat in the photo. And so I was helping them with all that. You know, they had cosplay too. So it's like whatever people want to do for their trip, we we help them out. We help support that and say this is awesome and, you know, give yourself the. <laughs> yes. I love that idea. I love the action figure idea. <clears throat> but that's the kind of that. things that people do, number one. And if they do that, it's like, sure, fine. We'll help you out with it. I am definitely going to do that. I think that is an excellent idea. Yeah, and because then you can have the the actors right there. They might not be able to give you much advice, but the character—I mean, the characters right there. Yeah. Anyway, what I'm saying is that I think that that is a perfect idea. I love it. Definitely. I, I am my um going now. Slow. I'm just uh, really trying to. I'm trying to do one more thing before we head out. I'm trying to get the links for our the 50th anniversary Facebook page where people posted pictures. If you go to the Geek Nation Tours Facebook page, uh, uh -huh. I would love uh, a uh, thumbs up. Follow me or... Oh, yes. Your Geek bit. Nation like, Tours. Do, like, do all that stuff. Geek Nation Tours and Geek Nation Tours community page. You can do that. I don't know. I, I you know. just found them. So here we go. And then I'll do my own too just for the hell of it here. So number one... Here is the uh, here's the regular Geek Nation Tours uh, page in the chat, all the way down to the bottom. So that's your Facebook page for the for yes. the regular Geek Nation Tours. Perfect, thank you. And then here is this is a lot of fun. You can go see it publicly. This is the page for our fifth the 2016 tour, the Trek tour. Which is, and you can see everybody sharing their photos there from the 50th. Um, like come on down. Yeah. A few other things are there, but when you, when I, when, there's been a few ads since then, but get down to the 2015, uh, 2016 posts. And there, oh, there's me standing on the, uh, at uh, Q's garage station with the new. And uh, Chris there with the magazine too. So scroll down. The, the original posts are all from the tours. And then one last, uh, this is my Facebook page. And the people who are on it, you can be a member in, in all that, but um, uh, come on, gang. Uh, here we go. You can see photos from our day tours too. So a lot of... Right. Sometimes the, the group dynamic is awesome because for one thing, when we're in a group, we're all staying at the hotels together and eating together. And you got that thing. When I done my day tour, it's somebody I just meet coming and going, even if I knew them already. So it's, but you're a little more nimble. We can do wackier things, just the two or three or four of us. So they each had their strengths, you know, yeah, yeah, and yeah. stuff. But everybody should try to do a huge tour at some point. You know, like I said, save your pennies and I agree. And I do agree. that. Okay. Yeah. The, uh, um, that has always been the number one thing that geek nation tours wants to do is create a community. And so when we go there, we always ask like on the star Trek tour, the first thing, like why star Trek? What is your famous mm -hmm. fa favorite series? What's your favorite episode? And then everybody really starts to talk. Everybody gets the jokes. So the community binds so quickly together uh, in, in destination. It's always amazing to watch. It, it really is. So, um, so keep that in mind. You're not going to be on a tour like a castle's place uh, in, tr uh, you know, one of the tour companies uh, where everybody's kind of interested in castles and they hang out and they're talking about it and they, you know, kind of get together. This place, everyone gets you. Like the, uh, on my on our tours, no matter what we uh, are, are what sh mm -hmm. uh, show we're doing. I mean, which geeky thing we're highlighting everyone gets you and the community is great so that's one of the things that we try to do on our tours is to get the community to bind so and, yeah. it, and it always happens yeah what's your next big non-trek tour coming up adepticon i go to a miniature wargaming uh, okay. uh, uh tour in uh, schaumburg just outside of chicago okay. uh and that one's there and then i also went uh, then i go to the uk uh, to Nottingham and do another uh, miniature wargaming one, and then the next one is is uh, 
Gen Con, which is a board gaming one. Okay. Then we what's might. Next, we, yeah. What's your next non-convention based? Next, but next, it might be Wasteland Weekend. Did you ever ha hear about Wasteland Weekend? Wasteland Weekend is a Mad Max Road Warrior uh, uh, convention slash fest. I think it was a, more of a festival where there, everybody dresses up as if they uh, are in, in Mad Max. And it is spectacular. Like it's like yeah. you walk in and you think you're there. Like it's okay. That's it's no more hobby. Really close to okay. you. Well, everybody's diving over. It's the Voyager documentary panel happening now. So I went and I was a donor. I was a volunteer donor. I'm looking forward to seeing more people at the the, the cruise. People who were donors have a special party before the cruise leaves. So the day after I do the cruisers on tour, Janet and I go down. <laughs> if I'm still alive. We go down to uh, see some of the cruise folks off at the Who Are Voyager documentary donors. Thanks. So I'll see you guys there. And Terrace, it's good to see you, you guys. Again. You're welcome. This has been Love awesome. You too, Mary, Mary, Mary. Hopefully that was good for everybody. You learned, maybe you learned a lot, maybe some things to think of, and maybe uh, we'll see you on one of our tours someday. So yeah, thanks. That would be awesome. Thank you, yeah. guys. Thanks. Trek well. <laughs>